Greetings folks, Professor Fiore back. Today we're going to look at a voltage divider bias bipolar junction transistor circuit, but we're going to take a slightly different approach to this. The question is, what happens if you have a noisy power supply? In other words, maybe you have some ripple in the power supply. So here's a fairly standard looking a little voltage divider circuit. What I've done over here is I've added a little um, AC source. This is actually a sine wave, which is not a perfect example of ripple, but it's close enough for our purposes. So I've added that in series with our DC power supply of 20 volts. Right? You can see it's 120 hertz, 2 volts peak. So we're going to actually see this 20 volts with 2 volts riding on top of it, 2 volts peak riding on top of it, to represent our ripple. Now that's pretty nasty ripple, but I've made it big just to make it easy for us to see what's going on. So I've got a small signal generator here, a 20 millivolt peak, 1 kilohertz test tone. And you can see this is a fairly standard layout. I'll, I'll just do some very quick computations here just so we can get an, a ballpark figure of where we're going. So we've got a 30 and a 10. If we uh, use the approximation, this 20 volt is going to go uh, 15 volts here, 5 here. It'll, in fact, be a little bit less than 5 volts, uh, you know, 4.7, 4.8, something like that because of the base current draw. But that's going to give us uh, basically 4 volts dropping across these guys, basically 1K, 10 ohm swapping resistor. That's going to give us about 4 mils. That's right. That 4 mils will give, a, give about an 8 volt drop, DC drop on RC. So from the average of 20 volts, you know, we're looking at around a 12 volt DC signal sitting here on the collector. Right, that's our bias. Now gain-wise, well, we've got a swapping resistor at 10. That 4 milliamps of current is going to give us, you know, somewhere in the 7 ohm range for um, our prime E. We might have a little residual uh, X sub C value over here, but just for round numbers, let's just call that, say, 20 ohms. And then we have um, our load and bias resistor at 2K and parallel 22K. That's going to give us about 1.8K. So you take a 1.8, you divide that by the 20 ohms, you're looking at a gain from base to collector of around 90. Now, how much of this 20 millivolts is actually going to make it to the base? Right? We've got a 1K generator impedance. What's the input impedance into the circuit? That's going to depend a lot on what beta is. Um, the R1, R2 divider, 30 in parallel at 10K, that's going to give us 7.5. And like I said, we only have, you know, 20-ish ohms out here in the emitter. So depending on your beta, 100, 150, 200, um, you know, you're not going to get a very big value. You're only looking at, you know, if you had a beta of 100, you're looking at like 2K. If you had a beta of 200, you're looking at 4K. So, you know, what's it going to be? Maybe 3K, something like that, right? Now, you put that in parallel with the 7.5, you're going to lose a little bit of signal. You know, you were only going to get maybe... 12 to 15 millivolts, again, depending on what the exact value of beta is, out of this 20, right? So we're going to see maybe 12, 13, 15 millivolts out here. That's going to get multiplied by the, the gain of around 90, and that's what we're going to see out at the load. So a little over a volt, volt and a quarter, you know, maybe a volt and a half if we have a real high beta, uh, but somewhere in that vicinity. All right, so let us do a little bit of analysis here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to come up and grab a DC analysis. All right, move this over here so we can see it a little better. And check out a few things. Okay, um, first thing, you know, the current through RC up here at the top, we, we approximated that to be around 4 mils, right? I, I of uh, emitter and, and the collector resistor. We're getting right around 4 mils, so that looks pretty good. Um, if we look at some of our points like, like uh, uh, V divider here, okay, um, and we're getting 4.844 volts, right? So we expected just a little under 5. On the collector, we are expecting around 12 volts DC, and on the collector, we're getting 11.845. So that all looks pretty good. Nothing looks out of, out of the ordinary, okay? All right, so let's go in and do a little bit of um, transient analysis see what we get. So I'm going to run this from 0 to 20 uh, milliseconds. Why 20 milliseconds? Because I want to see a few cycles of this ripple, right? You know, I would only need a couple of milliseconds if we were just looking at the one kilohertz, but, 
you know, what we should be seeing here is um, this one kilohertz and a, and a little bit of this 120, a little bit of this ripple, okay? Now, how much, right? That's a really good question because this is gonna come down through the divider and we're gonna see a portion of this two volts peak sitting on the base. That's gonna be multiplied by the gain of the amplifier and come out at the output. Of course, like a normal signal, it's gonna be inverted, right? So sign in, minus sign out. Now, this is also applied to the collector. So we are in fact going to see a little bit of a variation in the collector voltage too, right? There's a two volt direct connection to here. So this collector voltage is gonna be bopping up and down um, along with the ripple. Now, if we're really lucky, that in-phase signal will perfectly cancel the out-of-phase signal that we got from the base that was getting multiplied. Of course, the chances of that happening perfectly are pretty slim. So, you know, we'll see what actually happens here, right? Okay, let's bring this guy over here, bring him up so we can see him a little better. And I will put on the legend so we can see what's what. Okay, so the dark blue over here, right? That's V ripple that we're seeing. Uh, this green here in the middle, that's the divider voltage right here. So you can't see it too well, but there's a little bit of an AC variation, right? That's, that's just under five volts, the expected DC, but there is a little bit of an AC variation and that's the ripple that's sort of leaking through here, this divider and so forth. And that's what's gonna get multiplied up, all right? So now we come over here to this top guy that's the collector voltage. So this is our output writing on the DC. So here's our 12 volts DC, right? Coming right across there. So we can see, hey, there's, there's this high frequency thing, and then there's this low frequency thing. So that low frequency thing is in fact the ripple and the high frequency thing, big surprise, is your AC signal. That's the one kilohertz signal, right? Now, if we look at the amplitude of this and it is bopping up and down, so it's not really easy to see but if we just kind of compare it to the scale here, right? Here's, here's uh, two volts right here from here to here. Each one of these hash marks is a volt. So we're, that's about what we're getting for peak to peak. And we were expecting somewhere you know, around a volt or so, volt and a quarter. So that seems to be reasonable, right? As far as the signal. But as far as your output, this is your actual output on the load, okay? Uh, I don't really like that. I mean, look at that huge, huge bit of um, ripple that's coming through the output. If this is an audio amplifier, 120 hertz is perfectly audible. So you're going to have this horrible, horrible hum going through along with your audio signal. So the question is, how do we get rid of that? Well, the obvious solution is make a better DC power supply, right? And you won't have this problem. You know, it's the old uh, saw about an ounce of prevention being worth a pound of cure, but maybe we could say a gram of prevention is worth a kilogram of cure. Um, if we can get rid of the problem to begin with, you know, that would be a lot better, all right? Okay, so what's a possible solution? Here we have a decoupling. This circuit is essentially the same as the preceding circuit. I have all the same values out here, except I've monkeyed around here with the input a little bit. So let me flip back to the original one, All right? So you got a 30 and a 10. There's your 1K generator, um, the input coupling cap, the op, uh, the, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, transistor and so forth. So I come back over here, you know, there's the generator again, there's the cap. Here's all the transistor stuff on the collector emitter side, my 30 and my 10, but I've added this cap over here and this resistor, right? This, these decoupling resistor capacitor. Now, I've chosen RDE to be 7.5K because that's the same value, equivalent value impedance-wise, um, as R2 in parallel with R1. So I want to keep everything consistent as possible. You could play with this value, um, but I want to keep the, the simulation consistent from circuit to circuit. So I, that's why I chose that. Here's what's going on. For DC, this cap is an open, and we have essentially at VDIV, the same thing we had before. In other words, roughly five volts. And that gets coupled into the base of the transistor. Now the current going through RDE is base current. It's not divider current. So we're only gonna lose maybe a 10th of a volt or so here. So what we had before, in other words, 
a little under five, five volts here, you know, four volts out here, four mils, all that, that's not gonna change. Now, as far as the generator is concerned, this thing used to see Z in base in parallel with um, R1 in parallel with R2. Now we have a cap out here, which is essentially gonna bring this point down in impedance, and it's RDE that really sets the Z in now, right? In the extreme case, this would be a, an ideal ground right here, and RDE in parallel with Z in base would set the input impedance. So again, why I chose the seven and a half, because I want everything to be the same. But here's the deal, when the, when the ripple signal comes down here, you can now adjust this amplitude with the value of this cap and of course this resistor. Our gen, the, the internal impedance also plays a role in this, but basically you can sort of futz around with these values a little bit so that that uh, initial cancellation I was talking about will be much closer to ideal. Will you be able to get rid of it perfectly? Maybe, but you can certainly make it better than it was, right? Remember, this ripple signal's coming out here. It's in phase. The signal that leaks through into the base is out of phase. So the whole point here is to try to get these things to cancel, right? But anyway, we should have the same gain we had before. The real question is, what do I have now as far as um, the amount of ripple that's coming through here? So we're going to do another uh, transient analysis. All right. Boom. Okay. Uh, so you can see, again, let me get the legend out here. So here's my uh, collector voltage. And we can see there's a little bit of a variation there, right? If I go and look at the um, the actual output voltage, the load voltage, there is a little bit of an up and down, but compare it back to the original, right? Look at the size of this. That's the ripple that we got through to the output in the first circuit, the uncoupled original circuit. And now in our modified circuit, we can see that that has been tamed considerably, all right? So it's not perfect. Remember, if you really want to start from scratch and get this thing to be as good as possible, work on this power supply, get a good regulated power supply. But this is an issue that we have with voltage dividers. So this is one way, this sort of decoupling the power supply from the signal, this is one way of attacking it, all right? Only requires an extra resistor and a cap, and you can mitigate that reasonably well. All right. See you next time. Take care.